Get ready for a tough but very fun riddles competition. Yeah! Take whatever helps you activate your logical skills. A magnifying glass, a deerstalker hat, or a notebook. And let's get rolling. Let's warm up with some easy stuff. Can you find a vampire among these emojis? Here it is. Ugh, creepy. How about this crowd of people? Can you spot a vampire hiding among them? It is this girl. Look at how sharp her teeth are. And one more riddle for you. Which of these people is a vampire? See those fang marks on the neck of that guy? He was bitten and has already turned into a vampire himself. Stephen was found unconscious in his living room on a Sunday evening. Someone had hit him on the head. The man was rushed to a hospital while the police started questioning the suspects. There were three of them, Stephen's ex-wife, his neighbor, and his younger brother. Hmm. Stephen's ex-wife said she'd been walking in the park with her little niece all day. Stephen's neighbor said she'd wanted to go on a date with her boyfriend, but since it had been raining heavily, they decided to stay at home. And Stephen's younger brother said he'd been at work, finishing a large project. It was so important he had to work even on weekends. The police figured out who the attacker was quite fast. Can you do the same? It was Stephen's ex-wife. It had been raining heavily all day long. Who would walk in the park with a little kid in such weather? A criminal has kidnapped your friend and tied him to a tree. A huge, vicious dog is guarding this tree. You need to save your friend at night. But when you come to that place, you only have one piece of meat with you. It's not big enough to distract the dog for the three minutes you need to cut the ropes and help your friend escape. How can you solve this problem? Cut the meat into small pieces and throw them all over the garden. And while the dog is distracted, set your friend free. One day, Amy went on a date with her boyfriend Joe to a nice restaurant. Yeah. Joe gave her flowers and candy. They had a great meal and enjoyed the date. But in the morning, Amy woke up with a severe allergic reaction. Oh. She went to the hospital where she was told that she had been poisoned. But to figure out what antidote Amy needed, it was crucial to understand the source of the poison. The detective invited to investigate the case questioned everyone who could poison the girl, her boyfriend, the cook, and Amy's friend Cindy. Joe said that they'd eaten the same food in the restaurant. The cook said that he had brought Amy her pizza, and it had been freshly made. And Cindy said she thought Amy's boyfriend had poisoned her. She added that he had asked her what flowers Amy liked to gain Amy's trust. Have you realized who poisoned the girl? It was Cindy. Have you noticed the book on her table? It was about poisonous flowers. She advised Joe to give Amy flowers that would cause health problems. Ah. One company organized a betting game where one red and one blue marble were placed in a dark box. If a player picked the blue marble, the company had to pay them $5,000. But if the player guessed it wrong, they had to pay the company $100. The company cheated by always putting in the box two red marbles instead of one red and one blue, but no one could prove it. Mark was observing people lose one after another. Then he took part in the game and won. How did he do it? The man picked a marble and quickly put it in his mouth without showing the thing to anyone else. The remaining marble was red. According to the rules, it meant that Mark's marble was blue. The company had to pay him the money. Now, you need to pay attention to every little detail. Can you figure out whose dog it is? Look at that guy wearing a red jacket. See that leash he's holding? It matches the dog's collar, so most likely he's the owner. This parrot has managed to sneak away from its owner, and now the vet is looking for them. Can you say whose bird this is?
The owner is that woman sitting on the couch. There's a cage behind her. Another waiting room at the vet. And whose sphinx cat is this cutie? See that guy waiting for the doctor to bring back his pet? He's surrounded by lots of furry animals and can't stop sneezing. He must be allergic to fur. That's why he got himself a sphinx kitty. And whose horse is this? See that girl standing in line? She's the only one wearing riding boots. She must be the owner. These kids seem to be terrified. No wonder. See that white rat darting around the classroom? Who does it belong to? It's that girl who's checking her backpack. You can see a cage and some rodent food inside. Ah, oh, look at this cutie. What do you think? Who does this mini pig belong to? This guy is the owner. His outfit matches the scarf the pig is wearing. How sweet is that? And whose hedgehog is this? This lady is the owner. She's wearing special gloves to handle the animal. Yes! And who does this absolutely adorable pug belong to? Its owner is this guy. If you look attentively, you'll notice a pug tattoo on his leg. Lily came home and saw her favorite vase shattered. Extremely upset, she exclaimed, What's happened to my vase? Her husband Sam explained that around lunchtime, he heard a loud crash from their bedroom. He rushed there and saw that Lily's expensive vase had been broken, and a robber was running away. Sam followed the man outside, but his glasses got foggy because of the cold weather. That's why he missed the man. Lily called the police, but after police officers heard the whole story, they refused to investigate this case. Why? Glasses fog up when you enter a warm place, not vice versa. Sam invented the story because he was afraid to admit he had been the one to break the vase. Oh. Emma's husband Liam knew his wife had been dreaming of going to an archaeological site. One day, she told him about the perfect opportunity. There was a remote site ready to be excavated, but there was no internet or network connection there. She would have to camp in a tent with almost no modern conveniences. But since she was really excited about this trip, Liam was ready to wait for her at home. Two days later, Liam received a message and a photo from Emma. The man got furious. He realized Emma had been lying about the whole thing. How did he understand it? Before leaving, Emma told her husband there was no internet connection or cell phone reception there. Then how did she manage to send him the photo? Several bank workers visited a canteen in their office building. Since it was the riddle day, Matthew, Isaac, and Wyatt were served tea, and Hunter, Christian, and Nathan drank coffee. What drink did Aaron get? Aaron drank tea simply because of his double-letter name. A man with a bandage around his head came to a police station. I was hitchhiking when a car stopped. The driver asked me to check if one of the tires was flat. I bent over to look, and he hit me on the head. When I regained consciousness, I found out he had taken all my money and smartphone. I only remember that the guy had a big car, large eyebrows, and a mustache. Soon the police had a suspect. They found him in a cafe, but this man said it couldn't be him. He changed the tires on his car two weeks ago. And since then, the car had been parked near the cafe, but the detective realized the man was lying right away. How? There's a no parking sign near the cafe. No car could be staying there for two weeks. Isabella is standing behind Mia. 
But at the same time, Mia is also standing behind Isabella. How is it possible? The girls are standing with their backs turned toward each other. Mrs. Red was a big boss in a large company. Recently, she hired a few new employees. One day, her assistant was filling out their documents and found something strange. What? She informed Mrs. Red that one of the new employees seemed to have fake documents. But the boss was in a hurry and told the assistant that she'd have a look at the papers the next day. Yeah. But the next day, Mrs. Red found out that her assistant was in a hospital, unconscious. Oh my God. Someone had attacked her on her way to work. Mrs. Red hurried to check the new employee's documents. Look at them and try to figure out which ID is fake. This ID card claims that Edward is 34 years old, but the man using this document is way older. Oh. It was an extremely hot day. Police officer Black was driving along a countryside road. Suddenly, he noticed a hitchhiker on the side of the road and stopped to give him a ride. The man explained that he had been waiting for someone to pick him up for more than two hours and offered the officer some ice cream. Black refused and asked the guy about a gang of criminals who had just robbed a jewelry store. The hitchhiker exclaimed, I've just seen a red car speeding past me. Must have been the robbers, but they were driving in the opposite direction. We'll need to turn back. Black didn't believe him and took him to the police station. How did the police officer guess the hitchhiker was a criminal? If the hitchhiker had indeed been standing on the side of the road for two hours, the ice cream would have already melted. So, he lied to lead Black the wrong way. Oliver has in mind one of three numbers. One, two, or three. Charlotte is allowed to ask him just one question to figure out which number it is. Oliver can answer her question only with no, yes, and I can't say. Which question should Charlotte ask? She can say, I have the number one or two in mind. Is your number larger than my number? If Oliver answers yes, it means he's chosen three. If he answers, I can't say, the number he has in mind is two. And if he says no, his number is one. Several people were asked to step over a pencil lying on the floor, but none of them managed to do it. Why? The pencil was placed near the wall. Who doesn't like Rebus puzzles? They're fun, and I've got a few tricky ones for you. Enjoy! What does it mean? It's misunderstood. Try to crack this one. So we see pot and eight O's. Together, they make potatoes. And how about this one? That's high five. Small hint, the arrangement of these letters is important. This rebus means, hurry up! And one more puzzle for you. What could it mean? It's a friend in need. A hungry vampire is following you on a deserted street one dark night. Suddenly, you see a house with its door open and hide there. The vampire can't enter your shelter, but is patiently waiting outside. However, you still have some hope. There are three tunnels leading out of the house. But inside the first tunnel, there is molten lava. The walls of the second tunnel keep closing every 10 seconds, crushing everything that gets inside. And the floorboards of the third tunnel collapse every five seconds, 
sending everything lying on them into an abyss. What should you do? Just wait till the morning. Vampires can't stand daylight, and your pursuer will have to leave you alone. Yes! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.